In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, you can be killed when looking directly into a basilisk's eyes, but not when looking at a reflection of it or through a ghost or a lens. Is there a scientific explanation for this? And could this mean that there's a way that Harry Potter could be safe without needing just to shut his eyes? In this episode of Science with Steph, I'm looking at whether there is a sciencey way to explain who gets killed and who gets petrified. Okay, so for those of you who are unversed in Harry Potter lore, the Basilisk is a giant snake roaming around the school of Hogwarts that can kill students instantly just by looking at them. However, if you look at the Basilisk indirectly, you don't die, you just get petrified. What can this mean, Albus? It means that our students are in great danger. There's no safer place in Hogwarts. There's no safer place in Hogwarts. There's no safer place in Hogwarts. <laughs> So, child protection standards aside, in order for us to science the shit out of the basilisk, let's categorise all the victims we know about. First, there's Mrs Norris, who was petrified by looking at the basilisk in a reflection on the water. And the other victim of looking at a reflection of the snake is Hermione, who was smart enough to carry a mirror around when she worked out what the basilisk was. Then we have Justin Finch Fletchley, who was petrified by looking through a ghost at the basilisk. The ghost himself saw the basilisk fully and so should have been killed, but because he was already dead, it's kind of hard to categorise him there. But we'll just say he's killed for the sake of our categorisation. Our next victim is Colin Creeby, who looked at the basilisk through his camera. And the only properly killed victim we know about was Morning Myrtle, who presumably was wearing her glasses at the time, since her ghost has glasses. So let's put her in the dead category. So when the basilisk looks at you directly through glasses lenses, it kills you. When that look is reflected or absorbed, is there some property of light that changes when it's reflected or absorbed? Here's my theory. The basilisk is emitting some form of radiation from its eyes that when it hits your retina, it kills you. But if this light is polarized, it only petrifies you. But what is polarized light? What we see as light is a small part of the whole electromagnetic spectrum, a type of radiation that's carried by photons. These photons are a wave where the direction of travel is perpendicular to the oscillation. For each photon, the electric oscillation is perpendicular to the magnetic oscillation. For unpolarized light, all the photons have electric waves that are in all different directions with no regular pattern. And this is true for all unpolarized light, not just the visible stuff that we can see. You get unpolarised light coming from the sun or from your incandescent light bulbs, for example. Polarised light is a type of wave where all the light is oscillating in the same direction. In physics terms, this is called linear polarisation. You can also have circularly polarised light, but if you want more information on that in particular, I'll link some interesting videos in the card. Passing light through a polarising filter reduces the amount or the intensity of light by about half. The resultant light is also polarised. Adding a second polarising filter will only allow the component of light parallel to that filter to pass through. Rotating the filter by 90 degrees will block out the light completely. These polarising filters are actually lenses that I took out of 3D glasses. 3D movies use polarised light to create a 3D image. They lay two images on top of each other, one horizontally and one vertically polarised. Wearing the glasses only allows one image into your left eye and the other into your right. Your brain takes these two images and is tricked into thinking it's a 3D image. This is why if you tilt your head too much or take the 3D glasses off, you get double vision. I hate 3D movies for this exact reason. That gimmick got old real quick. <laughs> Polarised light happens around us naturally quite a lot. Light that gets scattered by air particles over and over splits into waves of different polarizations, causing a white glare to happen in the sky. This is why photographers use a polarizing filter in order to get a nice rich blue sky color in their photos. Light reflected off surfaces like tarmac and water can be polarized horizontally. This is because at the surface, some light enters the water and some is reflected. Any reflected light at the same angle as the refracted light in the water is absorbed by that wave, causing the reflected light to only have polarisation parallel to the water surface. 
This happens most strongly at a specific angle called the Brewster's angle. But at other angles, some or most of the reflected light is polarised. This is why polarising sunglasses are handy for reducing glare from roads. Right, so what does this all mean for our basilisk theory? Well, in nearly all the petrified cases, the victims looked at the basilisk either from a reflection or through a filter. And by filter, I mean ghost. This is where the main difference between the killed and petrified victims is. The polarisation of light gives a lovely scientific explanation for how the snake's killer vision works. But Steph, I hear you all shouting in the comments, Colin Creevy was just looking through the camera viewfinder, which is just glass, the same as Moaning Myrtle's glasses. Why wasn't he killed? Okay, the Colin Creevy argument is the main hole I found in this theory. Light through the viewfinder shouldn't be polarised. However, a polarised camera works by absorbing light of a particular polarisation, colouring the film, and then the rest of the light, which is partially polarised, passes through the film. If, and it's a big if, Colin Creevy was somehow only looking at the polarised image of the basilisk, then the film would have got the whole brunt of the killing radiation and Colin would have only got the polarised light. Which, like, is kind of what happens in the story. The film gets completely melted and Colin only gets petrified. So, artistic liberty aside, I suppose this theory holds up. This means that if Harry Potter was just wearing a bunch of swag like polarised sunglasses, he would have been safe from the killer vision of Basilisk. So my question for you is, do you think this polarisation theory fits? I will be hanging out in the comment section down below if you want to let me know your thoughts. And in the meantime, if you want to watch my last episode of Science with Steph, which was uh, the Lion King and Tropic Cascades and whether the lions are actually part of the circle of life, you can watch that by clicking here. Or if you want to watch the video that the YouTube algorithm thinks you'll enjoy best, you can click down here. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!